Hey guys, Wayne Harlan here, and today I'm going to take you through a simple warm up before I row. I'm planning to do the workout Heimdall, which is uh, pretty short but fairly intense. Super fun workout, it's one of my favorites. Uh, but before I do, it's really helpful to just get all of our joints moving and uh, somewhat like get your brain ready to move your body. That's the way you want to think about it. But what we like to call it is a neural warm up. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the rower. Uh, you can situate this thing any way you want. Uh, just so you can hang on to it for balance. It's really important if we're going to be on one leg to, uh, to stabilize our body and make sure that we feel comfortable standing upright. So I'm going to start with just the ankle and I like to put the ankle out like this. Uh, if you're comfortable, you can hold it up. If that's too difficult, you can rest it on the rower. And then I'm going to work on just moving that ankle joint all the way around through this full range of motion. And this is going to tell my brain, uh, get ready to move this joint get ready to do something, you know, more than just sitting around. <clears throat> I like to hold it up like this, but if you want to rest it on that rail, that's fine too. Okay, so I'm doing about three to five reps per ankle. I'm going to go through the other one, same thing. Your goal is to try to make every single rep better than the last. Don't worry about doing it fast, worry about doing it right. Move better, feel better. Then I'm going to stagger my stance like so. I'm like this anterior 45. The knee can bend and it can straighten, which obviously everybody knows, but it also has this really nice rotational ability to it. And uh, if you're rowing properly, you're driving really hard off the flex plate, you actually will have a little bit of rotation in your hip, which is going to rotate your knee. So it's good to take your knee through this full like rotational bending straightening process, which is uh, a knee circle. So we're practicing knee circles right now, just warming up that joint, surface area. And my hip is also moving a little bit here. So I'm going back around the other way. For my foot is flat on the ground, be aware of that. Then I'm gonna to switch to the other side, same thing. I'm gonna bend, rotate, straighten. If you don't have a lot of range of motion here, or if it's really difficult for you, you might have some shaky movement, that's fine. Just keep practicing until it smooths out and uh, in time your range of motion should improve. This type of thing should really help reduce risk of injury. It's going to increase your uh, performance, your strength, speed, power, all that. Okay, so about three to five. Then I need to go back to hanging on to this for balance. I'm going to stand really tall. My hip is in this position now. I'm going to do a few circles with the hip. So after about five, I go back around the other way. Good. And five. Then I'm going to bring the hip out to the side. I need to bring my arm here to keep it out of the way. And I'm going to practice drawing this hip circle. This is uh, pretty difficult for most people to move their hip in this position because we just rarely ever do, which is why it's important to do so, right? All right. So I got about five there. And I'm going to extend my hip now. I'm going to switch, you can see from the side angle that I'm really trying to get my hip into extension, which is challenging for a lot of people. Most people, when they do that, they tend to start leaning forward. I'm gonna keep this stance leg straight, maintain my posture, extend the hip, and I'm gonna try to push my hip into extension over and over again, and draw a little circle, right? This also kind of doubles as like a nice stretch. Good, so now I need to switch to the other hip. Now we can draw a few circles here. Four, and then back around the other way. <clears throat> and then I'm opening up the hip, same thing, just drawing hip circles. And then back around the other way. If you need to pause the video and like go slower, that's fine. Then I'm gonna extend the hip, take your time, try to make every movement better than the last. And then just pause and reverse. It's a good little stretch for my hip there. Warming everything up. All right, so when, you're, when they're on the rower, um, could be like a lot of lower back loading, right? So it's nice to have some tilting. We can practice tilting side to side, stretch these muscles. That's gonna open up your, your uh, lumbar a little bit and create some space between the joints. If you feel comfortable, you can rotate all the way around 
flexing over. And then also extend your spine. Oh man, that feels good. Good stretch. You might do like two circles one way to the other, or you can do more if you want. If you uh, feel tight in any one of these joints, feel free to do a few more reps on that, on that joint movement, that's fine. Or if that's too difficult for you standing up, you could always try this seated. You can still tilt, tilt, you can round out, and you can extend. It might be a little bit easier for most people to do this seated, at least at first. Oh, nice stretch. Then the next joint up is my thoracic spine. Now, for that one, it's best to put one foot here in the flex plate. I'm going to anchor my shoulders down so that they can't glide. And I'm going to focus on just moving my spine forward and back. If this is really easy for you, you can add some side to side movement. Or you could even combine those two into a circle. So I'm going like back, side, forward, side, back, and then back, back around the other way. I can exhale here, inhale here, exhale, inhale. Make sure that you're not moving from here when you do this, okay? We want to isolate the spine movement. Oh, it feels a lot better, feel looser now. The next joint up would be my shoulder. I'm going to practice gliding. And I can just do like uh, one arm at a time here. <clears throat> it's a really important part of the, the rowing stroke is gliding from the scap. Okay, and then I also have my elbow. Make sure that you do the other shoulder. And then back around the other way. This is a little elbow circle. Elbows are going to get loaded pretty hard in that rowing stroke, so we can just go to the other one, glide forward and back. <clears throat> and then elbow circles. I'm just going through like this, you know, bending, rotating, extending. Very similar to, uh, to a knee circle, really, how it can bend and rotate. <clears throat> All right, that feels pretty good. I feel like ready to do something. Now I'm going to jump on the rower and, and go for about five minutes, nice and light, just practicing my form. Uh, my target here is going to be about 50% of my 2K score. So if your 2K is 200 watts, then you should probably just warm up at 100 watts. The idea with the warm up is that uh, we just want to activate stuff, you know, activate your cardiovascular system, get everything, all the blood flowing, activate your airways, um, and get your muscles used to the movement. We don't want to burn up too much sugar uh, or exhaust you at all. We just want everything to be nice and warm and, and ready to, to go harder. Uh, so that, that concludes our basic warm-up before we row. And I uh, hope that helped you out a lot. Like I said, I'm going to do the workout Heimdall, which will also be on the uh, YouTube channel here. So if you want to go through that workout with me, then just find that video next. And uh, feel free, if you have any questions, to reach out to us at rowforge at iCloud.com. We're happy to help, and we hope that your training has improved from using the RoadForge app. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.